so basically we have done with sclera we are done with choroid and now we are going to start the last one that is retina so briefly discussing the anatomy of the retina let's begin so anatomy of the innermost layer okay that is retina retina it is the innermost layer first of all it is an incomplete layer okay incomplete because it partially covers the eye from the back partially covers the eye okay so it is incomplete layer the eye that covers the eyeball that covers the eye from posteriorly so the eyeball is covered at the posterior aspect by the retina very easy okay and it is the innermost layer incomplete layer then it is the neural layer of the eye and it consists of all the nerve fibers and these all nerve fibers these all nerve fiber they collect they collect and they form up a optic nerve at the back at the posterior aspect we studied the opening the cribriform fascia and the two structures other okay in the previous lecture now the major function of the retina is to record the images is to record the actions and present it as a film so basically the eye is a camera okay the eye is a camera so who is recording this images this actions and the films who is producing this film so that is retina okay the eye acts as a camera but the recorder is the retina very easy now going up to the now moving on to the gross anatomy of the retina so the retina has three parts three parts the first part is the optic disc also called as the blind spot very important so the optic disc or the blind spot it is a point in the eye at the posterior aspect okay it is a point in the eye where the optic nerve leaves okay so after this point there is the lever of the optic nerve or or there is the first part of the optic nerve as you can see in the diagram this is the blind spot over here okay and from here this is the first part or you can say i'd say the optic nerve is leaving from here okay it is also known as the blind spot because no rods are present over here but cones are present over here but there is no vision due to retina as because rods are absent over here okay and only cones are present in the retina part the next part of retina so the next thing in the retina is macula okay and this macula is responsible for the central vision of the eye okay this macula is responsible for the central vision of the eye and as you understood if there is an abnormality in this macula there would be a loss of central vision okay and for example what are such common diseases is this is cystomacular edema okay so the name itself tells us cysto there would be a cystic formation it is in the macular region of the retina and edematous fluid could be seen over here okay cystomacular edema now the center of the macula is known as the fovea okay center of the macula is known as the fovea now what is fovea fovea is responsible for giving us the best image okay and it is the most sensitive part to light because it has the maximum concentration of cones present in this layer okay the next thing in the retina comes is the ora serrata okay so ora serrata it is a point at the anterior termination of the retina now where at the anterior termination or at the junction at the junction where the ciliary body and the choroid meet meets each other in between of these two structures there is ora serrata 
ora sare ta it is the site of intra vitral injections okay that is the site for intra vitral injections the distance the distance between the limbus which we studied okay the scleran cornea meeting point and the ora sarata is about 6 mm okay so the distance between these two is 6 mm now appropriate distance between the intra vitral injections okay it is the appropriate distance this 6 6 mm is the appropriate distance for the intravitreal injections okay with limbus as the landmark okay so some landmarks in the eye these are 3 mm posterior to the limbus there is a structure present that is called as amphoquia 3.5 mm posterior to the limbus something is present that is called as pseudophagia we'll discuss this and 4 mm posterior to the limbus there is a structure present called as phagia okay so what are the sites of intravitreal injections we have discussed this earlier again discussing it so the sites for intravitreal injections are anterior of ora sarata or you can give it posteriorly to the limbus or in between the ora sarata and the limbus or you can give by piercing the sclera and the pars plana okay these are the four means by you can give the vitreal injections now briefly discussing about the spaces inside the eyeball there are three spaces present inside the eyeball 1 2 and 3 as you can see in the diagram let us discuss these spaces the first space that you can see it is the posterior segment it is present at the posterior segment and it contains the vitreous humor of the eye as we know the second part it is the posterior chamber of the eye and the space between the iris and the lens okay then the third space that is in the anterior chamber as you can see here the anterior chamber this is the posterior segment and this is the posterior chamber so anterior chamber it is in between the cornea and the iris okay the cornea and the iris okay in between the iris and the lens is the posterior chamber and the posterior segment lies in the vitreous humor you can see this is completely the vitreous humor okay and as we know the posterior chamber and the anterior chamber this is completely known as anterior segment okay the anterior segment and this anterior segment contains of aqueous that is nothing but watery fluid inside it okay that converges the light now briefly discussing about the aqueous humor and the vitreous humor present in the chamber of the eye okay the aqueous humor it is in the liquid state the vitreous humor it is a gel form it is in the gel form okay present posterior at the posterior chamber okay and it is in the gel form because it contains hyaluronic acid okay the simple aqueous form contains watery secretions and vitreous it is in gelish form because it contains water with hydro hyaluronic acid okay so water plus hyaluronic acid gives a gelish form and this is present in the vitreous humor the volume in the aqueous chamber is approximately 0.31 ml okay so distribution of the aqueous humor that is in the anterior chamber it is 0.25 ml and in the posterior chamber it is respectively 0.06 ml now the rate of production of this aqueous humor so what is the rate of production of aqueous humor it is produced it is secreted at a rate of 2.3 
microliter per minute it is secreted at a rate of 2.3 microliter per minute this is the secretion or production rate of aqueous humor now who is producing this aqueous humor it is produced by the ciliary processes okay and the outflow is by the trabecular meshwork very easy produced by the ciliary processes and outflow is by the trabecular meshwork now coming up to the vitreous humor jellyfish form containing hyaluronic acid the volume is approximately 4 ml the volume of vitreous humor is 4 ml the volume of aqueous humor was 0.31 ml now the vitreous humor it does not continuously secreted so the vitreous humor is not continuously secreted in your body as the vitreous humor is formed during the development of the eye as the vitreous humor is formed during the development of the eye it is not continuously secreted whereas in compared to aqueous humor aqueous humor is continuously secreted with the rate of 2.3 microliter per minute now what is the facility of aqueous outflow aqueous outflow is also known as c value so what is the facility for this aqueous outflow what is the rate of this outflow of aqueous humor it is approximately 0.18 to 0. 25 as we studied microliter per minute the unit will be okay now investigation to measure this c value that investigation is known as tonography so tonography is the investigation for measuring the c value very very easy now the investigation to measure the iop so the investigation to measure the intraocular pressure okay extended by the aqueous humor means the intraocular pressure due to aqueous humor this is measured by tonometry this is measured by tonometry so the c volume is measured by the tonography and the intraocular pressure is measured by the tonometry now this aqueous humor it contains a high concentration of three things that is lactates ascorbates and pyruvates and that is that in the plasma so the concentration of these three is more in aqueous humor as compared to the plasma concentration okay now coming up to the anteriorly the anterior chamber depend depth so what is the depth of the anterior chamber it is normally 2.5 to 4.4 mm this is the depth of the anterior chamber and it increases it increases in myopic males and which myopic males the young myopic male this anterior chamber depth increases from 2.5 to 4.5 mm now coming up to the blood supply of the eye very important topic it starts from the internal carotid artery then it divides into the ophthalmic artery it has further three branches that is central retinal arterial branches the next is posterior ciliary artery and the muscular so these are the three branches of the ophthalmic artery proper then the posterior ciliary artery again further give rise to two branches that are long posterior ciliary artery and the short posterior ciliary artery so here we discussed about the branches of the ciliary okay 
now we are going to discuss the branches of IRS so there are two branches which anastomose which joins to each other at the root of the iris okay and these two branches joins to form a major arterial circle of iris it forms a major arterial circle of iris and this supplies to the periphery of the iris so the major arterial circle of the iris supplies to the periphery of the iris what other branches do you have the branches of the major artery arterial circle the branches from the major arterial circle moves centrally and forms the minor arterial circle of iris very simple the major one gave the branches which moved centrally and form the minor branches and this supplies the pupillary margin and some central part of the iris okay so the periphery part of the iris is supplied by the major arterial circle of iris and the pupillary margin and the central part of the iris is supplied by the minor arterial circle of iris now again coming up to the ciliary artery and its branches so the short posterior ciliary artery which we discussed has a 20 or 20 in number these short ciliary arteries are 20 in number and they enter i by piercing the sclera around the optic nerve these 20 branches from the short posterior ciliary artery enters the eye piercing the sclera around the optic nerve very easy ultimately the major arterial supply is of six that is ophthalmic artery the central retinal artery posterior ciliary artery long posterior ciliary artery the short posterior ciliary artery and the anterior ciliary artery so now seeing the blood supply from the ak kurana book okay so the arterial supply ophthalmic artery a branch of internal carotid artery as we saw okay it constitute the main source of blood supply okay the ophthalmic artery which is a branch of internal carotid artery it is the main source of blood supply to the eyeball and the main source of blood supply to the orbital structures also other orbital structures now the blood supply of each ocular structure is described in the respective topics okay so when we will study the iris we will study its blood supply also similar other other structures also now this is the image showing you the proper blood supply and the branches and even the anastomosis which we discussed coming up to the venous drainage the venous drainage of the eyeball it includes the central retinal vein major okay and this drains the blood from the retina now the anterior ciliary vein the short posterior ciliary vein and the vena verticosa drains the blood from the uveal tissue very important students okay so the main venous channels which are draining the blood from the eye are these veins include superior ophthalmic vein inferior ophthalmic vein and the middle ophthalmic vein the name itself tell us the work or the drainage system where they are going to drain the blood from okay at the superior aspect inferior and the middle aspect of the eye the medial ophthalmic vein angular vein and the cavernous sinus the most important one okay the cavernous sinus so these were the main venous channels we will discuss the venous arterial system in the respective topic in a great detail 
so that was all about the arterial and venous supply to the eye now in the next session we are going to study the neuro ophthalmology in a very great detail students okay